I've been studying Bengaluru's air for a month and it's more polluted than we think. I wanted to find out where this pollution is coming from and what it's doing to us. This is what Bengaluru's air looks like today. Our average PM 2.5 is about 40, which means our air is moderately polluted. But moderate air pollution isn't acceptable. Studies show that prolonged exposure is making us stupid. <laughs> WHO says PM 2.5 under 5 is safe. As per Indian standards, PM 2.5 under 40 is safe. Bengaluru's PM 2.5 levels are increasingly unsafe. Breathing in this quality of air all day every day increases our risk to many health issues in the long term. And Bengaluru's PM 2.5 has almost touched 200 a few times this year. In Europe or Japan, this would be considered a severe health risk. They would declare an emergency and tell people not to go out. Air pollution is not uniform. The air in your bedroom, living room and street right outside have a different composition of pollutants. At a national level, air in North India is now hazardous for most of the year. At a global level, this belt from Sahara Desert to Southeast Asia has more air pollution. Air pollution also has an annual cycle. Monsoon air is better since rain helps keep the dust down. However, in the summer and winter, air pollution can get really bad on some days based on regional temperature and wind patterns. Last month, the cyclone helped clean our air for a few days. And for a few days, it was really bad because of a volcanic eruption in Ethiopia. By air pollution in which area is the most important? The dust comes from the area, we know which area is the most important. The dust comes from the area, the dust comes from the area, the dust comes from the area. Bengaluru has PM 2.5 measurements going back 35 years. We can see how each year it has gotten a little worse. Today, we are better than Delhi, but almost as bad as Beijing. This was Beijing in 2013. Regularly, there were days where AQI touched 500. They called it the apocalypse. Pretty apocalyptic as Peter, some people. Which is why in 2013, China launched the Clean Air Action Plan. Strategically, over the next 10 years, China shut down coal plants, restricted vehicle movement, expanded public transport, and planted billions of new trees. Today, Beijing's pollution has dropped by nearly 60%. It's not perfect, but the sky is blue again, and that's progress. <music> Delhi's air is terrible right now, but you know, it's a little better than 2016. And they're trying to fix it. Talking about a problem is the first step. Delhi spent hundreds of crores last year on anti-pollution measures. Something will eventually work. Delhi today has 90 state-of-the-art air quality meters to measure their air. Number Bengaluru has 11. Bengaluru's AQI meters are unevenly distributed. There aren't enough on the east. But still, they tell an interesting story. Silk Board has the worst air in our city, which may be attributed to the congestion here. On the opposite end is Hebbal, which has one of the best readings because the meter is placed inside the lush green campus of the veterinary college. Pinia's air can be blamed on industrial activity, but most of the other polluted spots can blame their air on bad traffic. 
There are many private air quality aggregators and their data tells variations of the same story. We have the second best air of major Indian cities. But that's nothing to be proud of. Air pollution comes from three types of sources. Area source like construction sites, open burning or dust storms. Point source like industries or power plants. Line source, vehicles. Particulate matter is how scientists talk about dust based on its size. There's PM10, PM2.5 and PM0.1. PM of all sizes are made up of chemicals. When you breathe them in, you're sending chemicals into your lungs, blood and brain. These can accumulate in your body over time. And like an SIP, the risks to your life compound over time with exposure. Madam, Namaskar. Now we do air pollution bugge research matter, isn't it? Air pollution, any effects? I'm afraid of the Agitoitala. Oh, the Jasti, the seventy minutra, the Kondo continue as a medical care, ready from the magazine. Okay. 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 Bengaluru's air pollution is almost entirely man-made and most of it is coming from our roads. 64% of Bengaluru's PM2.5 is coming from vehicles, the highest for any Indian city. We have 1 crore vehicles and we have really horrible roads. Slow-moving vehicles on our poorly built roads emit air pollution. Large industrial vehicles struggling to navigate narrow streets also cause a lot of air pollution. This can all be easily avoided. A city built for walking, cycling and buses pollutes less. A city built for cars pollutes forever. Paris was worse than Delhi in 2015. Since then, they've banned cars in the city centre and it's worked. Air Parif directly attributes this remarkable improvement to regulations and public policies Specifically, the city's determined efforts to limit car traffic and ban the most polluting vehicles. Over the past two decades, Paris has deliberately traded automotive arteries for an expanding network of bike lanes and added much-needed green spaces. Another study says that in Bengaluru, 24% of our air pollution is coming from construction work and road dust. Both road dust and construction dust also have proven solutions. Look at China. To tackle dust, roads are washed regularly. Look at these amazing machines used to clean dividers. Meanwhile, in Bengaluru, roads are cleaned few times a year and not very well. Most of the work is done manually. We have some machines, but they are rarely seen. For construction waste as well, China has some kick-ass mechanisms to manage dust. Vehicles are washed when they leave the site. Domes have been built around demolition sites to contain the dust. The government of India has actually set many rules to manage this, but Bengaluru is too overwhelmed by its other problems. So walking, I agree, because in the 90s, so when I was in IAC, my husband and I would go to watch the midnight movies in Brigade Road, and then we would walk back. At 12 o'clock at night, Brigade Road, all the way back to the Indian Institute of Science, Today, this walk seems impossible. By ignoring pedestrian infrastructure and building public transport capacity too slowly, our city has incentivized people to own their own vehicles and drive it everywhere. If driving was nice, our current situation would perhaps be slightly more acceptable. But the driving experience often sucks more than walking. Much of Bengaluru's vehicular pollution comes from idling vehicles waiting at a signal for 10 turns with the engines on. When there are no signals, navigating our horrible roads in first gear is causing avoidable emissions. The people of Bangalore spend most of their lives waiting on the road. And waiting in this air is killing us all faster. Which is a single organ which is extremely important but open to the environment and that's the lung. Air goes in, oxygen goes in, it gets absorbed in the blood and that oxygen is the fuel of the body. Neither can I speak nor can you listen without that oxygen. Now, 
when you take this entry uh, oxygen and you make its quality bad or more uh, worrisome you insidiously put five six fellows who are the villains of life in that air doesn't require you to be a doctor you realize the harm when these materials go into your lung not only do they impact the lung but they set up this magic thing called inflammation Inflammation means every organ starts getting into trouble. It's affecting the heart, it's affecting your muscles, it's affecting your mind. We definitely see allergies more, uh, a cough more and wheezing more. Air pollution is bad for your heart and it's bad for your brain. Air pollution is also stealing your money. It is estimated that air pollution is the number one risk factor for ill health in India and that the impact on the GDP of India is some 30 odd billion dollars a year. You can imagine that that impact is substantially greater in cities than it is elsewhere around the world because the majority of our working population is located here. Those that lack the social protection measures or the financial means necessary to be able to miss work, for instance, if they're feeling unwell. So they lose out on daily wages. So the construction industry, for instance, is hugely dependent on informal labor. Missing work means missed income for laborers, but also slowing deadlines for construction industries. You know, people talk about this cousinet curves and all that. Ki matlab, you know, we'll take in the damages now and then, you know, we'll have uh, sufficient prosperity and then, you know, we'll clean up later. Uh, we don't really have to. If you just go back 50 years ago, you know, one large construction, people just take it for granted that one or two people will die. But then we realize, ki, you know, you don't, people don't have to die. <laughs> I mean, this is a classical conundrum. You know, whenever you talk about environment, you know, people throw in the other end which is development and you know we are talking about both because the end goal is actually human well-being uh, we care about the environment because you know that's going to impact human well-being we care about development because that you know uh, impacts human well-being it's going to take a long time and a lot of dedication to fix air pollution in Bengaluru. Pressure from citizens can help speed things up. Most of Bengaluru isn't even thinking about this issue. To improve Bengaluru's air, there's three things we can do. One, talk more about it. It's hard to understand air pollution without a meter. After studying it for a month, we're still learning so much. But having a meter helps. And having AQI displayed in shared spaces is a great way to start conversations. There's websites giving away air pollution meters for free. And this one from Amazon costs us just 5,000 rupees. 2. Protect yourself from exposure when you can. There's some situations in Bengaluru where now unfortunately it would be dangerous not to wear a mask. 3. Fix our city's governance. Air is everywhere. Individual action can only go so far. And the cost of protecting yourself from air pollution leaves many people behind. Our government needs to build capacity and do their jobs better. To fix air pollution in Bengaluru, we need to fix our roads. And to fix our roads, we need to fix our government. Because all of the stuff that worsens quality of life on a day to day basis on the ground floor also worsens air pollution. So, you sitting in traffic for hours every day increases your exposure to air pollution. Taking action on those directly is much easier than thinking about a perceived health risk and addressing that. Pollution is not the same. It's 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 not the same. Lovely India, growing India, at the same time polluted India, contaminated India and at the fundamental issue of what you breathe which you do 24-7 and this is the way the discussion should start because the time is now and this can be said year on year.